Einstein said imagination is more important than knowledge. I knew our project had succeeded when Jim Gates, one of our lecturers and a science advisor to President Obama, turned to me and said, I've studied black holes all my life, Sarah, and now I'm actually standing on the edge of one. In that moment, had science and art joined forces to create the singularity? The Black Hole Project was part of a large art science collaboration outreach event entitled Celebrating Einstein, which was initiated by Nico Yunus of the MSU Physics Department. On the upper right is the art installation team that created the Black Hole. I feel a little naked up here without them, actually. Um, from the upper left to the lower right in this, you can see the various designs we explored before settling on our final installation idea. These drawings allowed us to all be on the same page during the 20 month development process as we honed our design from complex to simple, from bulky physical objects to pure light. This is our final architectural rendering. The star field you see represented around the black hole was a laser array designed by Charles Kankelbert of MSU Physics Department. Through the use of lasers, the viewer was able to step from the outside in complete darkness into a star field outside the black hole, seeing the blue stars reflected on one's skin. Measurements were important to determine where the star fields were around the black hole, and we were limited by a 15-foot ceiling, which required that the projector would give us a maximum black hole width while still, still allowing the image to be sharp and clear. You can also see below the floor materials we tested for the screen material. This project was site-specific, made for the Emerson Ballroom. Our big question was, how do we create a piece that holds this space, which initially felt like outer space to all of us? Here is the ballroom, the floor, and the ladder we used to mount the projectors to the, ce to the ceiling, but the space is yet to be transformed. And here is our team, who could often be found working together in the dark, literally and figuratively, to discuss the work. We were looking both aesthetically and scientifically. The motion of the stars, the motion of small black holes, and the sounds themselves are all representations of the actual solutions to Einstein equations. Luckily, the physicists solved the, uh, the equations. This project was initially supported by a NASA MSGC education enhancement grant, and subsequently by many other entities both on and off campus. Here you can see the stocking feet of the elementary school students as they're learning about the anatomy of a black hole, their toes are wiggling in the accretion disk. An essential aspect of this installation was the soundtrack composed by Jason Bolte of the MSU School of Music. The composition consisted of an ethereal mix of harmonic sounds that evoked a meditative state, along with the theoretical sounds of gravitational waves, which were violent in contrast to the over -calm, overall calm. So here's a clip from that. You get a little taste of the sound here. In the summer of 2010, there was an ambitious show at the Museum of Natural History in New York entitled The Brain. In the first few minutes of that show, I was standing inside the brain with neurons firing all around me. I was amazed. I realized that I understood the brain by standing inside it far better than I ever had before. That was the seed experience for this project, along with looking to artists such as Olafur Eliasson, James Terrell, William Kentridge, and Lozano Hemmer, all of whom work with film, light, sound, technology, and immersive experience. Working as a collaborative team, we definitely had our battles as well as our moments when we fell out laughing on the floor, but ultimately were able to bring all our talents and passions to the final work. This is a still from Transmutations, the title Cindy Steelwell and I gave to her film, which ran in a continuous loop on the back wall of the ballroom at a scale of 15 by 22 feet. The equations came from a set of Nico's lecture notes on black holes, and I translated them into various drawing painting media in my paintings. Cindy photographed each and every painting stage. Then later, Cindy took the raw footage of my painting process and with morphing software, emphasized our metaphor of science finding the answer in equation, then that equation dissolving back into a field of stars, back and forth like chalk dust on Einstein's chalkboard. Here is a small snippet of that film. Today, science is on the verge of a new breakthrough due to the first detection of gravitational waves. These waves are vibrations in gravity itself, produced during violent events such as when black holes collide. They are the soundtrack to the universe. 
and their detection will represent a transition not unlike that of mute pictures to, motion cin to modern cinema. Now, imagine a tiny black hole, one that is the size of the sun and fits inside downtown Bozeman. Now imagine another much, much larger black hole, one that is a million times bigger than the first, and as the small one in downtown Bozeman gets sucked into the supermassive monster, it will spiral in, whirling and whirling around, and this is what we call a zoom whirl. Nico worked closely with Chris using solutions to the Einstein equations to visually map the zoom world orbits for our animation, just as the gravitational wave sounds were converted into hearing range for the soundtrack. Though you won't be able to stand on the edge of our black hole, on September 21st at 1130 a.m. at the Museum of the Rockies Planetarium, you will be able to sit back and attend the Montana Science and Engineering Festival where you can look up at a planetarium dome film version of this art installation generated by Eric Loberg with a new Digistar 4 equipment at the Museum of the Rockies. So thank you very much.